I have a confession. I'm a software engineer and I have a to-do list that is about a mile long. But am I so different from other software engineers throughout the world? I'm willing to bet I'm not. So dear viewers, let me tell you about one of the projects I have neglected for well over a year now. I had to rebuild my podcast website around a year ago and I knew that I wanted to do a better job on it than I had already. But my first priority was get something quickly up online with some information and then just come back to it and do a proper job on it. You know, within the next couple of weeks, I'd have time. Spoiler alert, I absolutely did not. I had other priorities. I was concerned about the constant maintenance that came with maintaining a content-rich website, especially when you consider the fact this content is very dynamic. Podcasts are produced like every week or two. Uh, I run events in different locations. So I would have to be constantly diving into code base and updating the content. It felt like a lot of work. So the easy solution for me was to rip off the Astro template, basically make a super simple, pretty much plain HTML website. However, this looks pretty unprofessional, as you can see. Also, there's not actually a direct way to get in touch with me here. That isn't very good when it comes to sponsorships or guest inquiries. As such, I was faced with a decision. I knew that I was going to have to have some kind of proper solution for this if I was going to take the podcast seriously. So for the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to commit to rebuilding it with a proper tech stack that will allow me to update the content regularly and account for it being pretty dynamic. As a result, I landed on this stack, Next.js plus a headless CMS. The headless CMS is Storyblock, who are also today's sponsor. You'll hear more about them later. So firstly, let me talk a little bit about Next.js. If you aren't already familiar, Next.js is a framework that gives you all of the advantages of React. In addition to this, Next.js also gives you helpful inbuilt file-based routing. And the real kicker is it gives you the ability to write API endpoints, which is super helpful. That means we don't have to create a whole separate backend. How good is that? Another key benefit to Next.js, particularly in this situation, is that the content is server-side rendered. Why does this matter when you have a content-rich website? Let's imagine I'm your friendly neighborhood search engine bot. I'm crawling web pages to find out the content on them to serve up to users. Now, say for a standard React app, I'm not going to get any information because it's pulled in. Most of the time, this happens so quickly that the end user wouldn't notice, but a bot will. As such, they don't actually have the information. With Next.js, all that content is shipped at build. That means that you'll immediately have access to all the information, and critically, so will the bots. That means the bots can use this content to serve you up in search results. This is particularly interesting for us because SEO is critical. I've also included functionality that programmatically generates a page when a new episode is published. That means that each episode has this individual page with all the content on it, thus functioning as a blog post. This means that each episode that's created helps us rank higher in SEO for the relevant keywords. If you don't know about the world of podcasting, I can tell you for free, discoverability is awful, so you need all the help you can get. External SEO is one of the best ways to do that. As such, Next.js was the natural choice here. So I started this video with a confession, and I'm going to make another one now. I've never used a CMS in my life. Never. And to be honest, I kind of really thought it was just a tool for marketing people. I couldn't really think of much of a use case for me to use one in my day-to-day -day work. After being introduced to this video sponsor, Storyblock, I realized I was pretty wrong on that. Here's the thing about the Code of Careers website. There's very little custom complex functionality. But what there is, is a lot of text content. There's also content around images. The episodes dynamically update. We put events on there. It's complicated. The content is complicated, not the JavaScript or the interactivity. In fact, the only JavaScript script that's more than a couple of lines is actually the functionality to pull in all the episodes. That means I didn't need to make many JavaScript changes, which is obviously ideal. However, in the previous implementation of the website, all the content was baked into the repository. That means every time I want to make a tiny change in the content, I would have to dive into the code, find a relevant thing, add it, commit it, push it up, open up your PR, double check it all, merge it in, and then check that it's deployed correctly. If this is the first time you've stumbled across my channel, welcome. Something that I'm huge on is pragmatism. That entire process is the antithesis of pragmatism. I can't spell the word definitely. I've struggled for years. I've never been able to do it. In fact, I often get it so wrong that the autocorrect can't even fix it for me. So let's say I've inevitably spelt the word definitely wrong. I'm going to have to go through that process three or four times. It doesn't make any sense, right? And this exact sort of situation is where a CMS is going to make your life a lot easier. And here's the real beauty of Storyblock. If you're able to use a basic API in React, you're going to be able to use Storyblock. That's how simple it is. And when I say use, I don't mean do anything special. I just mean grab the data from it and render it on a page. The funny thing is, when I actually first gave Storyblock a try, I confused myself because I assumed it was going to be harder than it actually was. I overcomplicated it in my own head. I didn't realize it could be that simple. So to prove my point, I want to show you how I would create a component in Storyblock now. 
Okay, so I'm here in the Storyblock UI. I'm going to create a new component now. Here's header. Uh, this is the component that we're going to be using. Um, we need to add some fields to it. So these are the custom um, bits that you put in. Uh, so I've gone with title to contain the title uh, and subheader, which is going to be the content underneath. They're both text. Uh, it could be a number of different things, but they're both text just because that's what we're going to contain in there. So you can see here that it's going to translate directly. This is the header component in the code itself. Um, what, what it does is it gets a block object that's passed in um, as an argument. So you can see here that I've made a slight mistake um, where I needed to put title uh, and subheader. So these are properties on the object that's passed in uh, from there. Then I've got to import header um, in the uh, root of the application. Um, you can see here that I've added it there to the components. Now we're jumping back onto Storyblock. We're going to import the header. Again, this is all visual. So I'm going to drag it up to there. Can't see it yet, of course, um, because I need to put in the details. So here we've got the primary title of the coder career and then the subheader just explaining kind of what it is, what we do. Uh, so it's a podcast and meetup group. Um, if you are based in Scotland Central Belt, uh, we are pretty consistently hosting meetups, by the way. So do get in touch if you want to come to those. Um, so then all we need to do is just reload the page. And there we are. That's now live. There's a pretty obvious and immediate benefit to using Storyblock in terms of the developer experience, and that's your repo suddenly becomes a lot cleaner. Imagine having hundreds and hundreds of lines of non-code, just text. In an ideal world, code should be just that, code. You're just going to confuse things if you have loads of irrelevant words in the code base. Imagine trying to search something and you get completely irrelevant results. Files also get far larger, it's more difficult to keep track of things, and you're much more liable to accidentally make some kind of mistake, particularly when it comes to side effects. You always have to do things to please the linter, like escaping certain characters and things like that. It's just a pain. So I've already alluded to another benefit here, and that is rapidly updating the content. You can actually just do this via Storyblock UI. I'm sure I don't need to tell you how quick and easy this is, but I'll show you how that works anyway. I've made a deliberate mistake in the text here. Let me show you how I can fix it in less than a minute. I don't think you could tell me with a straight face that whole process would be easier in an IDE. Something also worth considering is that if this podcast and community group becomes bigger, I may actually need some admin help in the future, and that person won't necessarily know how to code. I can allow them to use Storyblock to update the content on the website for me. That means you don't even know how to code to update the content. Say if I had a friend that's amazing at marketing that I wanted to do some copywriting for me, I could just get them to log into Storyblog and then add the relevant content. They wouldn't have to see a line of code. It just makes collaboration so much easier. Text, of course, isn't the only kind of asset that you can use Storyblog for. I'm also hosting all of my images on there as well. Now I can change those images whenever I want and it's super easy. And also as well, it means they're not pushed up with the repo, they're requested. I don't have to store those assets directly in the repo and I don't have to set up some kind of different CDN. It's just all handled by Storyblock. I always have a sneaky plan on the horizon. There's been a recent trend of people translating their content into different languages using AI. In fact, one of my favorite podcasts, My First Million, have been translating their clips into Spanish and you can barely tell the difference. When this process becomes more economical, I fully plan on doing this because I have quite a lot of listeners in South America. I could therefore have Spanish content on the website. I could store these translations in Storyblock. Now I haven't implemented this yet, but this would be a way to open up my content to a whole new market. If anyone does want to do a Spanish language version of this video though, do let me know. So a lot of this process is called content driven development. It's where we look at the content first. I wasn't sure about using a CMS when I first heard about it and then read about it. It seemed like it was adding a layer of complexity and that betrays my simplistic principles. However, it's actually a decision of pragmatism. Stripping away the most cumbersome parts of working on a content rich website manually is so much better than having to deal with one small extra platform, especially with the CMS that's so built with developers in mind like Storyblock. If you're a little bit confused or intimidated on how to get started like I was, Storyblock's official documentation is fantastic. They've done a deep dive into using it with Next.js. Once I ran through this process, it really started to click for me. If you want to hear more about Storyblock, the links are in the description. And if you want to hear more about what I can do with CMSs, let me know. Thank you for watching. And if you're new around here, I make videos about entrepreneurial software engineering. Thanks for watching.